What's up everybody, it's Sitch the Millennial Gamer, and I'm here to help you rediscover your love of video games. So as a millennial gamer, I can't tell you the amount of times I have heard from people that video games are for children. I am an adult. Video games are for children. Wow. And so me <laughs> in dating, I would rather you have a hobby that's not video games. Something that enlightens you. you I mean, I ain't gonna hold you. My favorite video game growing up, it was Frogger. And the truth of the matter is they are not just for kids. Video games have some of the most compelling and deep stories and they touch on subject matter that movies and books will never be able to address in the same way that video games can. And I've just gotten really tired of seeing the rhetoric of you're just sitting down screaming at a television screen. I'm tired of hearing the rhetoric that you're just wasting your time. I'm tired of hearing all of those things. So I wanna share a short video with you that might help really speak to the feelings that you're having right now. And then at the end, we're gonna discuss some of the solutions to the problem. I wanna help you remember how to enjoy playing video games. It can be strange sitting down to play a game and feeling none of the joy and excitement that you used to feel before. Before you got a real job, before you were married, before you had kids or other responsibilities. In the past, nothing could pull you away from the experience of living a completely different virtual life. Now, you can barely bring yourself to get through the tutorial. What happened? Maybe it's depression. It could be described that way. If you wanted to look at your lack of desire and motivation to play games as a symptom of depression, that makes sense. And I encourage you to speak to a mental health professional as depression has a variety of causes. And there are some core beliefs that create situations specific to gamers that can lead to lack of interest in gaming. Here are three that can make it difficult to enjoy video games. Number one, the productivity trap. As we grow older and take on more responsibilities, the belief that we should always be productive can negatively impact our enjoyment of leisure activities, including gaming. If you find yourself feeling guilty or unproductive while playing games, it might be due to the internalized pressure to constantly achieve something tangible. This mindset can diminish the pleasure you once derived from gaming and create a barrier to fully immersing yourself in the experience. Number two, comparison and achievement. Constantly comparing your gaming achievements with others, especially in the age of online gaming and social media, can lead to a sense of inadequacy or lack of motivation. If you're always focused on reaching the highest level, acquiring the rarest items, or having the most impressive stats, you might lose sight of the joy of simply playing the game for fun. The need to constantly prove your gaming prowess can sap the enjoyment out of the experience. Looking at you fighting game players, Number three, pressure to optimize time. Modern life is often characterized by a fast-paced environment where time is seen as a precious resource. This pressure to optimize every minute can lead to a rushed and stressed gaming experience. If you're constantly thinking about the next task on your to-do list or worrying about time constraints, it's challenging to fully immerse yourself in the virtual world. The inability to let go of these external pressures can hinder your ability to enjoy gaming as you used to. The fear of missing out. The fear of missing out or FOMO can contribute to a sense of unease and restlessness while gaming. If you're constantly worried about what you might be missing in the real world while gaming, it can prevent you from fully engaging in the virtual experience. The need to stay connected to social events or other activities can create distractions and hinder your ability to enjoy gaming to the fullest. Addressing these beliefs and shifting your perspective can help you rediscover the joy of playing video games. It's important to recognize that gaming is a legitimate and valuable form of leisure and self-expression. By letting go of unrealistic expectations and finding ways to balance gaming with other responsibilities, you can create a more enjoyable and fulfilling gaming experience. Now that we've defined the challenge many of us face when it comes to enjoying video games, it's time to explore the solutions that can help us reignite our passion for game. Let's discuss these solutions and dive into the intriguing concept of the Be Spontaneous Paradox, which can have a significant impact on our gaming experience. The first solution that I want to discuss is mindful gaming. This involves being present and fully engaged in the gaming experience. It means setting aside distractions, worries, and external pressures. When we immerse ourselves in the game without the burden of multitasking, we create the space to enjoy the journey that the game offers. By practicing mindfulness, we can savor each moment, rediscovering the joy of exploration, strategy, and storytelling. I don't know when it happened, but at some point I stopped playing video games the way that I used to 
As a child, I remember getting lost in stories. One of my most favorite experiences was playing a game on Xbox 360 called Lost Odyssey. And it was about a group of immortals and just hearing their stories about watching their loved ones pass away as they lived on forever or being like a, a soldier on the battlefield and watching people die around them. Like it really captivated me as a child. But as I got older, and started to have all these responsibilities and things that I had to do. It just didn't seem to be enough time for gaming. And truth be told, I kind of got locked in this TikTok algorithm, Instagram algorithm, checking things, wanting things immediately. If the story isn't immediately available to me right away, it took me some time to get into it. So I had to really rely on what I like to call mindful gaming, where I set aside time, set aside a place, clear out the distractions, clear away the turn off your notifications, put your phone away and, and, and sit down and listen to the music at the start screen and just remember what it was like to be excited to play a game for the sole purpose of playing a game, not to reach the achievement, not to get your dailies, your weeklies, your monthlies, but to really sit down and allow yourself to, and we like to say escape reality, but it's okay to take a pause from reality and immerse yourself in another experience where you can feel triumphant, where you can express a emotions that you may not be able to express in your regular life or if you're like me create a character that allows you to express parts of yourself that other people might not be able to understand the second solution that we're going to discuss is embracing imperfection it's essential to let go of the belief that we must achieve perfection or reach certain milestones in every gaming session instead of striving for flawless gameplay we should allow ourselves to make mistakes, learn from them, and even find humor in our blunders. Embracing imperfection not only relieves the pressure we place on ourselves, but also opens up the opportunity for laughter and genuine enjoyment. I am someone who really loves fighting games. In fact, if it were not for fighting games, I don't think I would be here today. At one point in my life, I experienced just the destruction and just uh, chaos of going through a divorce. And divorce on men, particularly, is very difficult. There are not very many support groups for men who've gone through this experience. And if I didn't have my friends, I'll never forget was Injustice 2. And y'all, when I tell you that I worked through some stuff in Injustice 2 with Superman, Lord have mercy that I worked through some things. Superman wins. And I'll never forget, I made a friend playing Injustice 2 who said, look, man, you have, you have potential, you have skills. If only you would just take a moment to practice. If only you would spend some time in practice mode. But I didn't want to do that because one of the things that's really interesting that I love the most about fighting games is that your character doesn't get better. I mean, it might get buffs, it might get nerfs, but your character doesn't get better. You learn how to make better choices. And being in that practice mode, it really made me come face to face with my issues with impulsivity. It made me come face to face with my the way that I talk to myself as I play video games. It made me come face to face with my, my tendency to compare myself to others. And when you take these things, when you take a perfectionistic attitude into playing video games, it will ruin your experience. It's okay that you don't get it on the first try. The Soul series is an excellent example of this. Die, you big bitch. Let's fucking go, sir. Let's go. Yay. What a wonderful feeling. God, it's worth it. It's worth it every time, bro. Every single time. Every single time. It is worth it for this feeling right here, bro. Let's. <laughs> 
It's a game that's built from the ground up about you losing and making mistakes and learning from those mistakes and getting better. And so if you're someone who struggles with perfectionism, learning how to embrace imperfection, learning how to accept that you're not gonna get it on the first try, that you have to learn. Every single L that I've been taking in Mortal Kombat 1 has been a learning experience. And instead of getting upset and getting frustrated and rushing into the next match, I now take my butt into the practice mode and I figure out what is it that got me? What is it that beat me? What do I need to practice? What do I need to learn? And as you learn to embrace imperfection in video games, you also learn to embrace imperfection in your own life. But again, we grow up, we become adults, we get these jobs that require us to do the best that we can possibly do and never make mistakes. And if we make a mistake, we can lose our job. If we make a mistake, people might look at us differently. If we make a mistake, it means that there's something wrong with us. But I invite you to use video games as a way to practice the skill of embracing your imperfections. Number three, set meaningful goals. As gamers, we often derive satisfaction from achieving objectives within a game. However, let's redefine what constitutes a meaningful goal. Rather than focusing solely on achievements related to rankings or stats, consider setting goals that align with personal growth, exploration, and trying new experiences within the game. This shift in perspective can transform the way we approach gaming and inject fresh excitement into our sessions. So many of us wanna reach the highest score. I know I do. I love music rhythm games. Those games have always just been a source of enjoyment and fun for me. I love this game so much. I love this game so much. I love this game so much. It's like, I can't explain it. It's like, it's like playing a musical instrument. Like, I love this game so much. As someone who grew up with a bunch of childhood trauma, I love this game so much. It's just, it's, I, I, I mean, just look at it. Listen, I'm moving in time to the game. The, the, the vocals are ramping up. Do you hear this? And while well, she's about to start singing, oh my God, come on. Listen to this, listen to the music I'm making. Oh my God. Bam, let's go. Bam, bam. Ain't nobody else doing that out here. Listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. Ah, yes. Ain't nobody else doing this. Y'all ready for the chorus? Watch this. Watch how I do the chorus. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen, listen. Did you see that shot? Oh, come on. Let's go. This game is so awesome. Perfect. Oh my God. And sometimes I take some of that fun away because I just want to be at the top. I want to be in the top 100. I want to make sure that I get the achievement for doing this perfectly. In fact, one of the best gaming achievements that I hang on to, like people who play football and hang on to their high school years, is whenever I beat through the fire and the flames on Expert, on Xbox 360 and Guitar Hero, I still think about it. And back then it wasn't about getting it perfect because I still haven't gotten it perfect to this day, but it was just the simple fact that I got through it. So if you approach your gaming sessions with a new frame of reference, with a new frame of my, you know what I want to do today? Today, it's not about getting the highest score. Today, I don't want to have, I don't want to be at the top of the leaderboard in Call of Duty. Today, I want to get four or five headshots. Boy, mm. 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 <laughs> let's go. What? That was my John Wick moment. I didn't mess it up. That was it. That's why we practice right there. That's what we do it for, fellas. For that one moment.
Slow down. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Today, I want to make it through an entire game without getting upset with myself. Today, I want to spend some time looking at the art and learn something new about the experience that I'm having. What is this? Adaptive pants. Huh. An $80 interactive sweater. Auto resize, adapts to your shape. Heating textile, never be cold again. Self-cleaning, no need to wash. Express yourself, what? Why do we not have clothes that wash themselves at this point? So if you can focus on setting goals that mean something, that go towards your personal growth. In Dark Souls today, I want to attempt this boss 10 times. And each and every time I wanna learn something new about their patterns, I wanna go online in Mortal Kombat 1, and I want to learn how to punish at least one new move. I wanna learn three combos with a new character. If you come up with a goal that isn't directly tied to some sort of comparison to another person, then you might find that your enjoyment of video games is enhanced. Number four, the be spontaneous paradox. You might be wondering, what's the paradox here? Well, it's the idea that structure can lead to spontaneity. By incorporating a bit of structure and planning into our gaming routine, we can actually create more room for spontaneity and joy. Allocate dedicated gaming time in your schedule, even if it's just a short session, and give yourself permission to fully immerse in the experience. This paradoxical approach can counter the feeling of guilt or unproductivity and allow you to embrace gaming without reservation. One of the things that we are all sorely lacking in our lives is time. Truth be told, some of our time is taken up by the amount of time we spend scrolling on TikTok because of the way that they've hijacked our pleasure centers and hijacked our dopamine centers so that we just get hooked on the next bit of information that seems important to us in the moment. But if you could set aside some time, and I know that when you set aside time to do something, it can feel like, well, now I have to do it. But if you set aside that time and release yourself from the guilt, and it's hard to do because we live in a society that for some reason, every other form of hobby is okay. It's okay to read for hours. It's okay to watch television for hours, even just horrible reality television that is adding no benefit to the world. It's okay to watch sports for hours. It's okay to do everything else other than play video games simply because people don't have an understanding of what it is you're actually doing. I heard someone say that I have lived a thousand lives. I've listened to a thousand stories. And so you might feel guilty setting aside time in your schedule to actually sit down and play a video game. But I'm telling you, if you would set aside some time, even 15 or 20 minutes, it doesn't have to be a really long game. You could play a roguelike. You can play a short story game. Find indie games that you can play. But if you just even just going and playing Sonic, goodness, man, I remember Sonic doesn't take long to play at all. But just rediscover and enjoy the freedom that comes with setting up structure in your life to enjoy video games. And if you do that, I promise you that that passion will come back. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be difficult. I'm reminded because I recently started playing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and I did not want to sit through that tutorial. I don't wanna do it, but I know that if I do, I will be at a significant advantage above a lot of people in this game. Like, the, I, I can't forget that there is there is something really awesome on the other side of this tutorial, and it's the game. But right now, I have to learn how to play it, because if I don't, then I just don't. And I gotta do it. And it's the same thing if you are studying to learn a new language. It's the same thing if you're studying to learn how to make your, 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 I don't know, finances better. Like, it doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. It's the same thing. You have to get through this and you can call it executive dysfunction, you see? Or you can be like me and just intellectualize it and not just do it. Each map has four exits that victims will use to escape. Okay, it felt like torture to sit through that tutorial, but as I sat through it, I started to see things and learn things that excited me. I became excited to get my sissy to level 10 so that I could terrorize people in that experience. Earning XP, oh, there's a skill tree? What? That means each killer that you are is going to be unique and individual to you, bro. Oh, you get to see people's level in the game? Oh, that must be terrifying. It's a level 10 sissy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's sick. Okay. 
And it's going to be hard. It's going to require you to set boundaries with yourself. It's going to require you to set boundaries with distractions. You might have to talk to your partner in your life and let them know, hey, this is something that's important to me. It's something that brings me joy. It's something that I, I, I have to experience in order to make it through my day to day life. And if you set aside that time, I'm telling you that gradually you will remember gaming doesn't suck anymore. It's not that now there are some games out there where like, really, really? Y'all gonna really do it like this, like, come on. And there are really some experiences that are just waiting to be had. I really encourage you, set aside that time, set aside that structure so that you can remember your love for gaming. And if you need help, you can follow my YouTube channel because we're gonna be talking about it and discussing it. And I can't wait to share my journey of growth with you as I get better at fighting games and as I learn and re-remember what it's like to play an adventure game. And I hope that I can model for you what it's like because video games can be an excellent stress reliever in a world that sometimes feels like what is going on. It can be a wonderful way to connect with community in a world where we're all very isolated. And it can be a wonderful way to practice many of the skills that I've talked about in my former life so that you can change the way that you experience reality. I'm not saying that life is a video game, but we can definitely look at it as one. And I know that many of us have invested skill points into things in our life where we felt like we had to, we felt like we had to play this role. You have to be this person. And you can use video games as a way to practice things like managing impulsivity, managing your resources. I can't wait to talk with you about how to practice financial literacy in video games. I ain't never had so much ammo in Resident Evil. But there are ways that we can practice these things in life and not have to deal with the consequences that occur whenever you're trying to practice them and you don't have an environment that is forgiving of the mistakes that you make. I'm looking forward to going on this journey with you as a millennial gamer and remembering and rediscovering what it was like to sit down and get lost in another world. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Unless the gate, oh, they must be able to, oh, yep, nope. I don't think they took, yep, they haven't turned off the electric gate yet. <laughs> oh, oh, that sucks. Oh, I am coming. Oh, I am coming for you. Yep, you didn't turn off the gate yet, did you? <laughs> you didn't turn off the gate yet, did you? You already know. You already know. You already know. You, <laughs> you already know what time it is. You already know. Yep, the gate. Yep, yep. Yep, the electric gate is fine. <laughs> That's hilarious. My guy understood the assignment. My guy understood the assignment. Ah. <laughs> John Wick. <laughs> it worked. John Wick Part 2. Nope, 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 no. I guess the second movie didn't do as well. Hey, catch this though for me, my guy. Catch this. Oh, you did dodge it. That was nice. She got crossbow. It was all good. It was all good. What's good? Mm -mm. Y'all gonna have to shoot me. Y'all gonna have to hit me on the first try. My little boy had dodges. Hey, that AI, he said, not today. That AI became, did you see him become, somebody clipped that. Did you see him become the main character for just a second? Laura, I don't think that I would uh, have us going through that door. You know what I mean? Cause that just sounds like where all the evil is. You know? Oh, is this a gun? I almost missed it. What is this? A break, at oh, oh, we gonna need it too. Oh, oh, you came out of nowhere, sir. That was disrespectful. And then we got Mr. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right. That's all right. Oh, come on, Laura. Get him with them jukes, Laura. Juke him, Laura. Juke him, Laura. Tell him why you got three movies. Show him why you got three movies, Laura. Show him why you have three whole movies.
Let's go. Duke them, Laura. Show them why you got three movies. Yes, ma'am.